sclerosis, and the prognosis was that I would likely never walk again. I likely I fell apart. As a teenager, the most important thing to me was being with my friends, something that suddenly seemed impossible. I was particularly upset when the school I had attended my whole life wasn't wheelchair accessible, which meant I would, wouldn't be graduating the following year with my class. I was convinced that any kind of life worth living was over. In retrospect, having met the most incredible people through my work, whose wheelchairs have never thrown, shown them, slowed them down, I am ashamed of the way I reacted. I am grateful that my work has given me the opportunity to learn that being healed and feeling well isn't so much a physical process as an emotional one. I was the youngest of four children. As my dad's medical practice was well established by the time I came along, I had the privilege of spending a great deal more time with him than had my brother and sisters. My dad and I would take long walks, play tennis, and go fishing at a nearby lake. I adored my mom, but my dad and I were best buddies. Neither of us were prepared for the shock that September morning brought. My sudden illness was particularly hard on him. More than the physical implications, he was worried about my mental health, I think. Dad realized that I needed to have something on which to focus, something hopeful. As fate would have it, he recently read about a woman in California who was training dogs to help people who used wheelchairs. Knowing how much I loved animals and hoping to give me a reason to keep fighting, he contacted the woman. Unfortunately, she couldn't send a dog as far as my hometown of Atlanta. 